This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. There are fundamentally three reasons why a person will undertake to do something really difficult in his or her life, to please himself, to please others, or to please God. And whichever one of these you choose makes all the difference in the world, and in the next world as well. Because every truly thoughtful man or woman is aware of an even higher responsibility than to himself or herself, and that is your responsibility to God, who is your Father. And this brings a new excitement to the living of life. One man told me every once in a while, he and his wife liked to go out to the San Francisco Opera, if only to see how the other half sleeps. That's a commonly held opinion, that the so-called better things or finer things in life are really rather dull. Sometimes they are, but there is one of the better things in life which in every sense of the word is truly exciting, and that is genuine religion because it is a thrill to come to know God personally. It changes your attitude. It brightens your outlook. Some people, like bad photographers, are always taking a dim view of things. They're dank and dour and dismal. But the human species was created to live differently. To be happy, I mean really joyous, with a higher happiness, which survives even in the midst of trouble and sorrow, because you are a son or daughter of God. And in really knowing that is joy. Will Rogers one time wrote, God made man a little lower than the angels, and he's been getting a little lower ever since. But every person has the right to choose, and you can decide, choose to seek the higher things in life. Oscar Wilde said, I sometimes think that God, in creating man, somewhat overestimated his ability. End of quote. I tend to think that Oscar Wilde, in saying that, somewhat underestimated God's ability. Because by the power of God, a person can change, can find new heights of faith and power for the living of life every day. But an indolent person is, in fact, missing the real satisfactions inherent in real work. And more he or she is missing the satisfactions of doing the work of God because that is the ultimate joy of life. That is the ultimate work of life. Effort on behalf of some great goodness is what engenders happiness within the heart and soul. And the religion of Jesus is not only love and joy, it is a thrilling, dynamic work. Jesus himself, at the age of 12, said, didn't you know that I must be about my father's business? And another time, Jesus said, my meat, my food, is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. He said, my father works and I work also. Whatever your occupation may be, your real work in life is doing the will of God, finding it and doing it. And every truly alive human being needs the challenge of living for something above himself and beyond himself. Such is the will of God. But the will of God is not only above you and beyond you. It is also within you, for the Spirit of God indwells your mind, and the love of God for you will inspire your love of others as well. The fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man were the two basic principles of what Jesus taught, the love of God and others. He was asked one time, what's the greatest commandment? He said, the greatest is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength. He said, the second is like to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The very wisest philosophers have a difficult time defining love. It's something high, wonderful, and spiritual. It is something of God, and God, the very source of love, loves you. That is the heartbeat of what Jesus taught, the heart of his message. God loves you. Listen to these majestic words of Jeremiah. But let him that glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am God who exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. 
think of that. Realize that God delights in loving you. God delights in doing good things for you, even as a good father or mother enjoys bringing goodness and happiness into the life of a son or daughter. May you discover the delights in loving God as well. Religion can be and ought to be part of the fun of life, the real happiness of life. Too many people make it a misery. One typical attitude toward the idea of following the will of God, for example, is the same as the attitude of that man who paid a wrecker truck $70 to tow his car, but he said he made him earn every dollar of it. He kept his brakes on all the way. You may be actively resisting the leading of God in your life. And just like being towed with your brakes on, the damage is suffered by you, by you personally, because in truth, to cooperate With the leading and guidance of God is the supreme satisfaction of human life. It's this way with practically everything in life. If you want to learn to play the piano, you cheerfully must cooperate with your piano teacher. Similarly, if you desire to live a full and meaningful and really joyous life, learn to cooperate with God, to say and mean, God, it is my will that yours be done. Ask God to help you be helpable, to cooperate with God's will, with the spirit of God within you. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you, that a fragment of infinity, a glowing ember of eternity, something of God's living, vital, and vitalizing presence indwells your mind. It watches and waits to stimulate and inspire your thinking The way you feel and act and react, the way you deal with problems, the way you treat human beings, all of this is transformed by the spiritual life, by beginning to live as you so long have longed to live, knowing God in a vital sense of daily companionship with God. I remember one time a high school boy, 17 years old, told me that he was contemplating suicide and had been thinking about it. For some time, giving much thought to, quote, ending it all. That's how he worded it, ending it all. I said, you couldn't if you wanted to. He said, what do you mean? I said, you couldn't end it all because suicide doesn't end it all. It only ends part of it, the life of your physical body, but the same spiritual problems which you've had to deal with in this life will largely be with you in the next life because the real you, your inner soul, your personality is not annihilated when your body perishes. Most psychological problems are essentially symptoms of spiritual problems. Solve the spiritual problems underlying your unhappiness and you won't want to end it all anymore, I said, because you're going to love it all. You won't want to end it all because you'll love life and all that it holds, even the problems and the perplexities, because you will have found the real strength of spirit, the strength of God, to meet these problems in finding the power of God. You can pray for and you can discover the energy of God for the living of life. William James said the greatest revolution in my generation was the discovery that human beings, by changing their inner attitudes of mind, can alter the outer aspects of their lives. But a person who seeks to live as Jesus taught, as a child of God and a brother or sister to everyone, the person who is really trying to love his enemies, bless those who curse them, pray for those who despise him, return good for evil, to live by the noblest truth he or she knows, that person soon discovers an inadequacy inwardly, spiritual shortcomings, that you can't live this higher life by your own power alone. You need the power of God, the energies of God, and turning to God with all your heart, you will discover God to be a person and a power in your life, that you can know God as a child knows his father. And once your life is given to God, a new spirit of spiritual growth will take place in your soul. But even at that, you may feel you're progressing too slowly, but be patient when you plant a flower in a pot. Will tugging on it and pulling at it make it grow any more rapidly? Of course not. And neither will worry and fretting 
accelerate spiritual progress. The flower grows no faster because the gardener worries. It only needs the proper conditions of growth, the sunlight, the soil, and the water. And neither can anxiety create spiritual progress in your life. You need only to persevere in prayer and worship and faith and the love of God and others, and maximum spiritual growth will be the inevitable result. There was a certain little boy who was asked one time if he knew what wind was. He said, wind, wind is the same thing as air, only faster. Jesus of Nazareth once compared the Spirit of God to the wind in the trees, powerful and yet invisible to the eye. But the important thing is that you can know the power of the Spirit of God in your own life if you will choose to seek it in living faith. Jesus once said, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And remember, the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-mastery. But the greatest joy a human being can know in life is living in accord with the spirit of God within. It is written, it is the spirit that quickens, which means it is the spirit of God that really gives zest and joy and life to a person. In his profound book, Out of My Life and Thought, Dr. Albert Schweitzer wrote, because I have confidence in the power of truth and of the spirit, I believe in the future of mankind. End of quote. The exciting thing is that this power of the spirit can empower you as well. It can empower your life with new meanings and values and truths and beauties and joys and aspirations so that you can live truly each and every day as the son or daughter of God you really are with zest, with energy, and with purpose. This can be yours beginning right here and now if you've not discovered it before by the simple living faith to claim it. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, Work. Let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.